Welcome everybody. This is Hands Up Now podcast episode 14 with none other than hardstyle, happy hardcore producer and DJ Darkstrobe. Hey, Welcome. It's going. All right. I'm finally on video. Okay, good. Um, now we're playing your song, by the way. Uh, we you have some um, unreleased productions here that uh, I think you shared one file at least on the server today. Yes, yes, I did. And I think what I'm listening to is actually Happy Hardcore, but what you sent was actually not Happy Hardcore, it was actually Hardstyle. Yes, uh, so I, I've kind of dabbled in a little bit of both. I take a lot of my inspiration for uh, Happy Hardcore from a lot of older hands up stuff like uh, Tune Up Manion. Uh, that kind of stuff. Nice. Um, so, uh, what brought us to this podcast actually is uh, very interesting enough. So we're waiting on episode six uh, guest speaker, and he hasn't showed up. Maybe because hands up is dead. So I'm gonna be uh, <laughs> ribbing him on that, and um, until he shows up. Uh, until then, uh, we have you on the on the stage and uh, taking over the mic now. This is great, and uh, I'm liking this because we're seeing less European presence and more American presence. And uh, need n need not I repeat that because the whole purpose of this whole EDM server that we started right in the beginning of COVID was the purpose of building a uh, market and uh, of hard dance and predominantly. So I'd say, for example, hands up. Uh, it didn't have to be hands up, uh, but we just called it because I'm just very passionate about it. Uh, that means we do uh, every hard dance genre, and um, and it's good to have you on the server. Join us exactly today, about maybe an hour ago thank or you. two. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Nice, nice. I'm and very excited about it. Oh, thank you. And one thing that I initially um, uh, came about was, uh, you know, I initially asked you like, how did you find our server? And you said uh, you found it through the Discord search engine. And I and I was telling you how much I love that search engine because like. Uh, well, if you use it wisely, you can grow out your own server. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and how mu how long have you been a member on Discord, by the way? On Discord? Oh, yes. Lord. Um, maybe 2017, 18. Okay. Five, six years. Wow. So this has been going on for a while. I, I mean, I got around 2018, I think. So, boy, that's about like that time frame. <laughs> but... Mm. Um, interesting enough, uh, uh, I used to use it for video games at first, and then I went straight to, uh, I'm like, you know what, this makes sense. Like, why don't we just start an EDM server and, and go all in on this? And I think I was one of the first hands-up servers, uh, if not one of the top uh, hands-up servers at the beginning. And uh, when we first started out, it was just 20 people, and now we're like 450 plus, and so we, we're, we're growing. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, one thing that uh, you mentioned is actually, so when you posted your, your demo today on, on the Whip Feedback channel, and I noticed it was hardstyle, so I'm, I'm just assuming that you're actually a hardstyle guy, but no, uh, you actually mentioned Hands Up on the podcast, and you do actually do have Happy Hardcore, um, part of your production suite. And uh, wh which style would you say is your favorite, if you were to line them up in, in the top three? Um, oh, that's difficult. To produce or to listen to? Ah, uh, good question. Um, whichever you want to <laughs> answer. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, I think a lot of my um, my stylistic choices and things that I kind of come up with on the fly line up a little bit more with hands up. Um, but as far as the um, expressive creativity goes, um, I, I'd really say hard style, just because I'm able to grasp it a little bit better and. Um, kind of flow with it a little bit more it's where i've spent a little bit more time i can't agree more because for many reasons hard style is, seems to be the one that uh well not only will people take you more serious but uh the market is there especially in the united states mm. and uh, i don't know if there's really a market in hands up in the united states what do you think <laughs> honestly it's it's really difficult to find other people that like hands up really difficult that's part of the reason why i got so excited when i found the server um is because i kind of felt like i was celebrating hands up alone oh Just god going back through and listening to listening to old mixes and uh, going through like all of dj splash's songs and things like that like oh, who else wow. listens oh, to this i need that's funny you mentioned that because you're number two today i mean yesterday we our guest uh, they they mentioned because i'm gonna ask you this at one point by the way think about this answer 
top five artists of all time. Um, and uh, for you, for you, but uh, you don't have to answer now. Just uh, and and she and she mentioned DJ Splash, and so kudos to DJ Splash one more time. Uh, bass is kicking. Let's go. <laughs> and one yeah. thing I'm actually doing is I wasn't emphasizing in case you don't know because this you haven't seen any of my podcasts, so I'm gonna just show you. So uh, I say this always on my podcast. I'm wearing my own custom made hands up now T-shirt, and uh, you probably can't see it now, but I'll show it to you later. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> And uh, so I brought this T-shirt when I went to a house music conference, and um, the idea was to kind of provoke and uh, you know open the idea to uh, top uh, house music DJs like Fed Legrand. I was face to face with him. I had a Q&A with him. Uh, Norm Pure, the same thing. I even asked her about hands up. Uh, what else? Um, uh, EDX. He gave me a hat. Uh, and I even dr- uh, grilled him on hands up. And the funny thing is, like, I think EDX had the best answer. He was the most laid back. In fact, in the end, right before he left, he just like, gave me the hat right before he got into his car. And, uh, like, y- you know, he-, he knows what I'm where I'm coming from and where I'm getting at. And um, my main concern really is the whole idea of mainstream versus... Uh, the other mainstream, which is the dominant uh, EDM, which is, you know, your EDCs, your ultras, and those festivals go all yeah. in on the house music stuff. And, and now they've let in Hardstyle hard to be played at this stuff. And how do you feel about Hardstyle the last 10 years being allowed in the United States? And do you think that um, you think we're going to see more of that? And uh, or is that something you want to follow up on? Yes, yeah, so um, it's actually gaining quite a large presence out here, and I was really surprised to hear about it. Um, so I was listening back. Uh, God, I've been listening to Hardstyle forever, mm-hmm. um, but hearing that a lot of people are using it now um, for primarily workout music, surprisingly enough, <laughs> um, a lot of guys yeah. are actually using it uh, using that Ziz method. Uh, rest in peace. Oh um, no, and. Uh, it's starting to gather a lot more of a following. Even some of the coworkers that I have that are going to the gym are starting to talk about Sub Zero Project and things like that. So <laughs> it's like, oh my god, um, it's gaining a lot of traction, and I'm really happy to see it. I'm oh, you're 100 really percent right. Like I, I remember when I was releasing things on this one distributor, and they would always throw me in some kind of fitness workout play uh, compilations. I never understood it until I figured out that people actually go to the gym and they listen to this kind of, they listen to music, oh, yeah. but need, they need music that can do these kinds of uh, programs. And uh, I'm guessing somewhere in a uni- in another universe, they're listening to my music somewhere. Uh, nar- this is my narcissistic side. I, t- I typically don't like to talk about myself, but uh, mm-hmm. funny enough, so what I'll do is I'll actually play our, we have a community playlist. I'll play it in the background and I want to make oh, sure it's awesome. not too high volume. Okay, I think that's decent. Because sometimes, like, the volume will be so high. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> it overpowers the mic. That's not going to be the case this time. That's one reason why we had to redo this podcast with uh, just Emilio. <laughs> so, he's going to be hopefully doing this next time with me. But um, anyway, so, uh, what exactly do you know about Hands Up? And that's interesting. We're asking only because, you know, the whole Hands Up thing. And we're trying to revive the genre. Cascada was mm. just in New York. And she did her tour in the U.S., did you know anything about that? Uh, are you a fan of Cascada? And what oh, yeah. exactly, um, like, uh, you know, do you, do you, does, does, has hands up resonate with you? Because with me, there's, I can, you know, draw, I can list a, a, a million things, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, what drew me to hands up initially, I'm going to start with, uh, was uh, a lot of the euphoric nature of it. Um, kind of, just kind of that brighter, um, full-on energy just i guess the the pressure that's exerted from it almost it's not the same pressure that you'd find in hard style or raw style or anything like that it's a lot almost sweeter and a little bit more um almost like a filtered pressure um <laughs> but yeah i've been listening to it what a lot year would you that. say would that be around when you first got into oh. it yeah, so this was um, right around the time of, uh, let's see here, Tune Up, Mannion. Um, oh, you must have been very young. Ones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, DJ Golem. Um, yep. Yep, yep. Cascada. Um, a lot of those names. Um, Italo Brothers, but they're kind yep. of hard dance now, but um, or at least made some hard dance stuff. I'm not sure what they're Wow, I'm very impressed. And, and which state are you based out of? Well, I grew up in Michigan, but I'm in uh, uh, Nebraska right now. 
Nebraska, Nebraska. Oh, where, I, I'm supposed to know this. Is this Midwest? That's not Midwest, is it? Uh, technically, I disagree with it being part of the Midwest, being from Michigan. What is next but, to Nebraska? Uh, <laughs> what, 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 what's uh, what's around you? <laughs> yeah, so uh, Missouri is just to our east. Uh, we're just north of Kansas. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, we're not too far from like South Dakota, Wyoming. South Dakota, okay. I'm, I'm familiar with Dakotas. Uh, okay. Because I'm North Dakota, South Dakota, like I, I've I've heard some people from there. Okay, interesting enough. Well, this is very cool. I think you're the first person from, from that state rep- representing here. Um, and uh, you've mentioned very big names in Hands Up, and that's really good. So you really you really know your stuff. It's not like how you're. I'm actually very surprised. I'm very I'm very grateful that you came to the server today. And funny enough, Thanks. for the audience who don't know that is actually Dark Strobe when he joined the server. We're supposed to have a podcast with another gentleman, but he uh, missed out, and so we did, we just did a straight up uh, swap, and we swapped him with Doc Strobe um, instead of just Emilio, and so uh, there you have it. I mean, uh, man of the hour. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I took your place. If he's if he's watching this one, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, very cool. Well, yeah, you may bring very important uh, point about heart style is, I mean, just based off uh, what I would say is my two cents on the whole thing is I really don't think it matters what genre you play today because uh, if you look at deep down, I'm not going to bash any names, but <laughs> uh, let's say popularity, con- it's a popularity contest. We can all, all agree on that. And when I say another thing is uh, it's actually gotten down to a point where there are people who pay to play. So they will pay to get into these festivals yep. and perform. Uh, they will uh, not really know how to make music or this and that. So they might have some way to just get in straight to uh, just get the job done, whether it's playing the mixtape and call it a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, not really actually DJing. So we're just talking like basic, simple. You don't have to be... Uh, an artist you can make you can fool everybody being an artist and uh what really really matters is the um, is the overarching theme here is that this is a place where the edm sector has become a place where it's only matters how many followers you have there's absolutely zero there's zero and i really mean this there's zero value to your quality even though it might sound kind of crazy right yeah, yep. bad m- bad track versus good track, and why does the really 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 good track not get attention? But uh, and then you have maybe okay, so maybe a good well track done, but it's like if you think about it, um, uh, versus like a professional <laughs> you know version of it, like more complex. Like for example, hard style you can do. I I, I do basic hard style. I got this one guy from Brazil. He makes complex hard style. He his name is even SL Complex. That's how good he is, and he goes traditionally. Like when he sends his material to the subgenre of uh, scan tracks, he would like you know do the extended mixes there, like a minute or two minutes uh, intros mm-hmm. and outros, just like they did back in the day. Because when I read the, when I look at his stuff, I'm like, this guy, is so talented. I should have him one of these, but you know there is a language barrier at this moment. So <laughs> until he gotcha, gets a little yeah. more comfortable, uh, but at any rate, uh, you picked very good genres. And and so what about happy hardcore? What what speaks to you when you when you made that happy hardcore track? It's a uh, it sounds a bit more modern than the old school stuff. And mm-hmm. what do you think about the whole happy hardcore scene? So happy hardcore is an interesting one. Um, I feel like it as far as the scene goes, it. It's dying out in some places, but kind of resurging in others, which is weird. It's it's just another thing about the uh, the genre evolving, though, I guess, right? Um, but uh, I really enjoy Happy Hardcore a lot. A mm. lot. It's, uh, it's something that kind of evolved from me being younger, listening to uh, the Hands Up stuff, um, finding out in nine co- Nightcore, because I was kind of a, a, a weeb and I saw anime pictures and was like, oh, I'm going to listen to this. But uh, I started getting into the Nightcore stuff, and then uh, from there found DJ Searle, S3RL. Um, And that was kind of my bridge into the the happy hardcore world. Um, So, Yeah, this is great. And by the way, thank you for posting your demo today. Uh, People usually shy about sending their stuff because they're like, well, what if I get butchered today on 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 the channel, on the Discord channel? This is not a place where we do that on here. Uh, time to time, we have some people who are lazy to say some comments like that. But, you know, th- I don't think you should ever be worried about anything like that to ever come. And, you know, we're a very drama-free server. 
I, I, I'm the admin, obviously, and so like I maintain a lot of the stuff. We have had tons of drama. So believe it or not, uh, we have cleared out the rotten uh, apples, um, you know. Good. And some yeah. people just, you know, they, 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 they want the drama, so they're not on the server. So mm -hmm. it's uh, sometimes they just, you know, they, they, they do this on their own. And now, um, yeah, so like in Hearthstone, I think you get better feedback than any other genre because we have um, like our label um, sound engineer. He's very talented, so he can give you some very feedback that I can't give you. Like the kind of things he hears and the tones and the e EQs and the certain the frequency and this and that. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, there's certain things. And then, and then beyond that, like, because he listens, he lives, breathes, hard style repeat. I'm not that. Um, I'm more on the hands up side on that. And then there is uh, some, and then as far as hands up goes, I'm very good to give you feedback on that or trends. Awesome. And then, uh, but there's plenty of guys on here for the hard style stuff. Um, and we also have a, a private chat for label uh, artists that we uh, have at the label who uh, can uh, send each other stuff that uh, they want quick feedback and stuff like that. And um, somebody in our server actually is very uh, clever. He would, well, actually two people. One is from the hands up and now he's all over the place. He, he's main, mainstream at this point. And yep. uh, he can help, he can actually, they, these two gentlemen can actually recreate what I, what you, whatever you're doing to help you with, get to where, what you want to get to. I, I, I feel like they kind of like feel like, oh, yeah, they heard your demo, but what if they made it their version and to it will sound good because they really like that idea. Uh, what do you think about that? Like, how, how, how would you feel if somebody ever did that to your demo? <laughs> well, I mean, as, as, as long as some of the, the credit is still there. Yeah, that's the most important that's part. The, yeah, that's 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 completely fine. I I love hearing different people's interpretations of things. I was doing that for a little while just to kind of get a grasp of what some other producers were doing. So I would go in and actually listen to a song and try and recreate it as close as I possibly could in my DAW with my sounds uh, to yeah. try to get that idea. Um, right. So it's it's a really clever way of doing it. It gets you a lot of experience, and it's also really good that they get to show somebody else like hey this is this is kind of how you could do things if you wanted to like focus on this a little bit more i think it could be a, a great educational tool in that sense as well mm -hmm. um do you are you aware of the heart style edm servers i'm only asking that because um uh, they're the more uh should we say i say i active because i really think they're active but they, i'm not saying they are not like trap or dubstep active heart uh discord servers but what do you think about those heart style servers are you following any of them like atmospheres or heart headhunters are you on there so uh the only one i've really joined so far is the wasted penguins one okay yeah um and, I believe he uh, was on the server too at one point. Uh, uh, he could still be. I just don't know. I, he, I think I did see Potons in the uh, in the user. He list. he was actually on. Uh, he comes from the same neck of the wood, which was this uh, forum, which had twenty thousand plus members back in like two thousand six, seven, and eight, and nine, and it was a hands up forum. And um, little did I not know, but uh, I mean through through times and certain images and titles, I would see his face and stuff in Hearthstone. I'm like, whoa, good good for him, good for him. I remember him uh, and his face and, and the name. I remember it from the form. And so uh, I'm very proud. A lot of people from that form ended up going really big. Um, some of them went top 10, uh, yep. like DJ Mag. Um, and uh, with that being said, uh, it was very interesting to, when I heard your demo, it wasn't like terrible. It wasn't terrible as in like you first opened a DAW and that was your first demo you ever made in your life. No, it was actually a really quality demo. Uh, like I can hear the mixing was actually really good. And so, uh, how long have you spent making music? And, um, yeah, tell us about that. Good Lord. Um, I've been making music for quite a long time. Um, uh, it kind of stems from my father being a, a vocalist. He was a rock star in the eighties, had a couple of videos up on VH1. Um, so I always had that kind of musical background or musical anchor within the family. And, uh, I had got a, uh, a secondhand computer pretty young off of a family member and my dad had a, uh, a copy of Ableton Live 6 on disc. Um, so I threw that into the computer, started loading it up and started playing around with uh, things that I was listening to, hand, hands up and hard style at the time. Um, and just kind of started taking off from there. Uh, I started getting a lot more serious with Cubase for a little while in, uh, I think that was 2013, right around there. And then 
um, always just been producing kind of background for myself stuff. Wow. Um, nice. Started started picking up a little bit more over the last five years and getting a little bit more serious into uh, learning how to master properly, learning a little bit more about sound design and music theory. Wow, that's actually really good. Um, yep. And uh, Cubase was something that I saw a lot of hard stop people going in using, and especially Happy Hardcore too. And uh, um, and then you mentioned Ableton. Uh, we have some people who you do use that uh, DAW on the server. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's good that you made the transition. Uh, do you think there's a big difference between Steinberg Cubase versus uh, um, Ableton, or which one's yes. better? Or what? You, what what's your opinion? So, oh God, it's, it's, they're really better for different things. Um, so Cubase I learned is a lot better for, um, it's a lot closer to like logic mm -hmm. or pro tools. Um, especially with the interface, uh, which makes it really, really good for like live recordings or natural recordings, yeah. um, versus Ableton, which is a little bit away from the live recording and, uh, that aspect so much as focusing around midis and, uh, okay. sampling and samplers. Um, yeah, the definition of better is like, you know, like for subjective. me, for me better. Yeah. It's very, it's, it, for me, it's, it's very like, um, uh, timing wise. Like I'm very, I would be impatient behind the DAW and the project. So I want to get it quickly. So I'm a fruity loops guy and you're right. It, it is subjective. Like what is the definition of better? Like uh, for you it could be something like th that quality stuff that, uh, the what audio processing is it processing, the, the yeah. factory effects? Is it, you know? Yeah, and like I remember, like I felt like almost like people were like, okay, switching from Fruity Loops to Ableton for the sake of the quality, and it was like Ableton will be actually that's really wasn't ever the case. It was never the case that's that much. Um, and so okay, great. And so, uh, what would you have you thought about your top five uh, uh, most influential artists? Are you still thinking on that? It's it's really difficult. It is yeah. really difficult. That is like the hardest question. Are you still think about that? We'll, we'll we'll jump to something else and yes. Uh, um, a couple more there. Uh, do you uh, talk to anybody in the states who uh, resonate with hands up and hard style, and they they can name you like what what you do, like the artist you name, for example? <laughs> oh, um, you know, I'm not really sure where a lot of different artists are from. Okay, I've so for the most part, like you mentioned, mo like the Cascada, Germany, uh, Italian Brothers, Germany. Yeah. Uh, even though you might sell, it might tick you off for Italian, not really. Um, because the genre, it, Italian dance, yep. and so. Yeah. Um. And by the way, have you heard of that genre? What do you make out of it? It was kind of before Hands Up, and then, uh, I mean, Gabri Ponte. You know, he came out of that. You know, I feel of '65. I mean, they they're the pioneers of, of that. What do you make of uh, Italian dance? By the way. <laughs> Honestly, I I don't even think I've ever heard that term. Oh wow! So that's crazy. So. There you can I'm check sure it out. It's just because I'm sheltered or, or what, but but in the in the eighties, <laughs> like how we had how you know like the cliche today of synthwave, we had like mm -hmm. that in it, Italy and uh, and I would say we as in like people would like re listen to this music, and um, in Italy it, it started to grow out of there and um, at some and then at that point like it really called it Italian dance and that eventually became hard dance version of it without the right. drums and now it's straight up to hard kicks. And it almost sounds like hands up, but without the fast speeds and the, like you'll okay. go f 140 max, I think, is something like that. And so kind of closer to like a um, like a Gigi Diagostino or absolutely, like that's a, it, a, that's okay. it, gotcha, that's it. gotcha. Um, and um, you know, I've come, I've come in contact with some people who run a lot of these big projects, like for example, Gabri Ponte and uh, Prezi also, who is very talented. Uh, Prezioso, I remember featuring Marvin, like their project. I mean, you wouldn't know these names, but Prezioso, um, I'll tell you, uh, the reason I'm mentioning his name right now is maybe you should know is because I, he had uh, 200 million plus streams on one track uh, project that they were working wow. on and with Gabri Ponte and it became a big thing over in Europe last year, if not the year before as well. So they've had consecutively very good numbers on yeah. Spotify. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, what's your take on the whole, uh, when you first started out making music, I was all about people downloading music versus the whole streaming thing going on today. Honestly, I don't, I don't have too much of an opinion on it. Um, it's, oh, I think the, the downloading music was great for the time, especially for things like underground raves and when, uh, um, those were a little bit more popular and a lot of smaller DJs had, you know, gigs out the wazoo, um, 
and that was a really good use for that. Uh, as far as the um, consumer listening, though, um, I mean, I've done both. I've downloaded tracks when uh, um, uh, LimeWire was a thing, yeah, and when uh, um, when sites like that were up. But uh, I think streaming. How, is how would you where feel if somebody were to? pirate your music just and i and you, and you don't have to answer to be honest answer in a way like because i say this i bring this up in all, all my podcasts um i a role model of mine back in the day uh responded to this in, in an interview he he said um he actually said uh he's for it because what it does it's a force multiplier one yep. person who can't pick up a wall he doesn't have a wallet or she and uh, even if they had a wallet, they just don't have the funds, right? And why neglect them c- who are like diehard fans, right? So what do you do with Absolutely. the diehard fans? Let them be. Let them torrent it. Absolutely. Let them turn. And then, um, and, and sometimes it's never even a question of money. It's the whole live, live wire thing, like you said. Like there was the bit comment, there was a the live wire, there's a torrenting left and right. Yes. Uh, a lot of people are afraid to bring that, uh, that into a conversation because... Um, quite frankly they're just so afraid uh, and uh we can all admit it uh we've been around these kinds of you know uh access oh, yeah. to these but but the thing is the the one what the concentration really is the this person said that you know they were he was okay even though they've had like you know million uh, millions of sales and stuff like that mm-hmm. still he would advocate for um his music be he okaying it that being torrented what well, now what's your take on all that Honestly, um, I'm kind of in the same boat, even though being a, a from zero producer, kind of, um, it's, I would be honored if somebody wanted to right. to rip my music as long as they weren't profiting off of it. Yeah, because let's say you go to, to the, the capital of Nebraska and then uh, there's a big EDM f- uh, stage there and you want to DJ there so bad. Well, uh, the only way you get in is if, if you have over 10,000 followers, right? Let's right, say that's right. the case. Let's just like, it, let, that's the case. And if you don't, then... I'm sorry, but hey, if you did your work and you actually p- produced a fan base of this many uh, followers and you can sell these tickets to them and you can, you know, even one tenth of it is okay, but even like half of that is super sweet. You know, the, these are kind of things that are like really resonates with a lot of the business. And uh, what, what's your take on the business? Uh, now, do you see yourself more as a producer or are you doing the DJ thing as well? I'm trying to get rid of my DJ gear. Well, what's your what's your <laughs> situation? <laughs> so honestly, I, I kind of consider myself a little bit more of an artist than a than a producer or DJ, anything like that. Um, so I just I kind of make what I want to make. Uh, I don't really care about numbers too much. I don't really care, you know, about uh, views or plays or um, or money coming from it at all. Um, if I can make somebody happy or somebody enjoys what I've produced that I've enjoyed producing, then I'm I've won. That's, Absolutely. That's, that's, yeah, you're right. Really you, 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 you know, you remind me of Matt Nitro, who uh, I was mentioning earlier. I've known him since 2006. He was on a Discord server just a few moments ago and very laid back. He will say something like that. He's only doing this because he has fun doing it. And yeah. uh, that's a very good reason. I'm telling I had a hard time when I started out. I mean, sure, I was a social butterfly back when I was even younger, way more than now. And uh, as I'm getting older, like I realize that, man, if I was only that fortunate to know these kind of tricks, to know how to make these kind of put, put these things together. And um, I was very shocked to find out that some of the material I was using was poor quality. Like what's your take on the whole samples and like wh- when you get samples versus creating your own samples? Do you spend much time on sound engineering or sound engineering not, not your cup of tea? I, okay. So sampling can be a really, really useful tool, really useful, um, especially if you know how to manipulate it and do sound engineering with it or to change it completely into something else, um, which I have done a few times in a couple of different tracks and it really works well. But um, as far as like making things from scratch is, is something that I try to focus on and do as much as I can. Okay. Um, like building my own samples, building my own kicks, building my own snares, uh, hi hats, uh, synths. I almost never use any presets for any mm-hmm. synths, um, but uh, I will occasionally find a snare that's just so much better than anything that I could possibly create, and be like, "Yeah, okay, I need to use that." Yeah. Um, 
What's your take on like when you work on a project? Uh, how, do you would you review your project like 15, 20 times? How many revisions are you doing? Are you, do you think like you know if because I feel like you're not the type of person when you send that uh, demo on the server, it, it, it sounded like you're not the type of person who just made something in like 15, 20 minutes and just spit it out and then posted it. Mm -hmm. That's not you. You are like you, I can tell you actually spent some time on. Cause like there was a lot of going on. It was and like I couldn't tell what's happening after the like the built up. So, so what's your take on that on, on that whole process of making music? Yeah. So um, usually I'll just start with the concepts. I'll come up with a melody or a, like a drop section. Um, that's just the kick and the melody and nothing really else. And I'll um, try and balance that out a little bit. Listen to it several times, and then go back in and then add more to it. Render that. Listen to it a couple of times through different media's. And then just keep on building upon that. And I think uh, the uh, demo that I sent in is probably the seventh or eighth render, the fourth one that's actually okay. named and <laughs> and focused a little bit. Wow, well, I'm telling you, like, uh, well, last year it happened, like maybe in November, I think. I had to I've rendered a file about 200 times. Yeah. Uh, working yeah. in a studio with you know with people and the mo a lot of people, a lot of uh, parties present and. Uh, not that it was stressful because I've done this for now a lot a long time, but uh, it was more on the lenses of like, I have to change this. Uh, this doesn't sound the you know the yep. vocals aren't too loud now. But hey, it was worth it. It was worth it God because it, this section is clipping and has to. Do, yeah. I had to like for, for, I have to make everybody happy. The things you do the the things you have to do to make everybody happy. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so so let me ask you this uh, on the production side before we move on to some other stuff is. Uh, do you feel like you are at a point where you're very comfortable with your sound, or do you do you take do you need some more time to develop what you're actually looking after? Because I feel like, I feel like let me tell you, let me put it this way, um, Eric Pritz, I've heard some stuff he made in like 2015, 2016, which were like really, versus like 2008, 2009, I'm like, what happened, right? So like, mm -hmm. did he like, you know, is the what happened with the quality? And, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, judge him on that. But I'm just gonna say like, like, do you do you think that um, at certain point you're more more comfortable? Or are you comfortable right now to get to the to to get in the market and start releasing music? Um, I'm getting a lot more comfortable, uh, is, especially with hard style. Um, something I'm still kind of struggling with my confidence in within my music is uh, doing my own vocals. Um, okay, which, so you do uh, sing. Yeah. I think you mentioned in the introduction, you yeah, said you. Bit. Okay, um, well that's high in demand because in hard style, <laughs> always. Oh, always. Yeah, especially in English speaker, in I've I've had somebody ask me today if they, we know any reggae, and I didn't know. one guy from Ireland, he's got this amazing reggae style and he does reggae music, yeah. and I'm like, y you should use him because I asked him like in 2012 to sing one of my songs, and. Uh, um but yeah i feel like uh by the way i feel like you, you and you and hardstyle can do a lot like just start like just you know emceeing or like as in like and not not rapping but like more like in like some kind of uh verses like you will put up a verse two three and uh they put it in the draw in the breakdowns of the music and boom or you put yep. it in your breakdowns i don't know <laughs> maybe maybe it's your own music but um uh, do you see yourself to uh, go all in on the on the singing aspect or or like the vocal aspect or are you gonna be like uh, sell them with with uh, making music on that? Well, um, what's interesting about that is actually just yesterday I started looking into and and potentially booking a a vocal coach now that I've got a little bit oh. more time and uh, a little bit more energy to put towards it. Uh -huh. um, so that's it's something that I definitely want to explore a little bit more. I want to be able to sing over my own hard style tracks and things like that without using a copious amount of melodyne. Uh huh. Um, but, yeah, uh, th there is um we when we started the server out the 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 same year, somebody from Miami uh, joined as well. I brought him in, and he does exactly that. He does the vocal coaching stuff. So, uh, oh, awesome! You can talk to him if you want. Uh, I can put you in touch together, and yeah, yeah. that would be fantastic. That's amazing that you bring that up. I mean, uh, somebody like me, boy, I've never actually went up to anybody and say, "Oh, I'm gonna need a vocal coach." Be and not saying that because I'm a singer. I'm not. I never identify as a singer. I'm more of an entertainer, and I'm more than welcome to spend time on the melodies and auto tunes. Hell, you right. know, I, I don't even know how to use melodyne, and I and I mean that because 
it's just so a dinosaur to me, <laughs> like versus like <laughs> something else. So I ended up getting New Tone. It's a kind of a rip off. Well, I won't say rip off, but it's a it's their own thing. You know, it's like mm -hmm. it's like Melodyne. It, it kind of mimics the idea, and it does it kind of quicker. And you just need some some kind of like flow to it. You know, if I'm pulling a lot right. of tracks together, I I can't spend days on Melodyne, and mm -hmm. I remember back in the day when people would use Melody, man, they spend like a week on this stuff. Like it's just for one of my vocals, they spend like a week on editing this stuff. And wow. but the, boy, did they make it sound good? Because <laughs> I'm awful. Like I mean, like I'm just super awful when it comes to singing. <laughs> mm. So I haven't, uh, yeah. I haven't gotten a whole lot of experience with uh, using Melodyne too much yet. I only bought it, uh, I think, uh, about a month and a half ago, maybe. Uh, maybe oh two. god, wow! So that um, you, you're very like all in on this re as of recent. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, it's it's been it's been a lot of energy going in. But uh, that that uh, happy hardcore track that you uh, yeah. played at the beginning was actually my vocals uh, pitched up and used Melodyne to actually get uh -huh. that um, almost uh, early hands up style, um, very very auto tuned, higher pitch. I'm telling you, man. Like, the, sound, so. let me tell you, the only reason I I took you on a podcast because the hard style and the hands up that you're mentioning. I'm like, yeah. typically. I don't judge people just because they don't know hands up, but boy, like, is that a, is that something that I'm really trying to... So I, I am working on a project here. I'll tell you more offline about it, how we're trying to get this cool. whole thing back together and the, the music and the scene. And uh, before we used to have a nightclub in Chicago and we could do all these mm -hmm. great things, but sadly enough, the, not even the DJs today uh, would want to, you know, do anything with it that were playing hard, uh, hands up back in the day. So... Right. because they're doing their own thing and i keep asking them and like it's kind of like reinventing the wheel then not everybody's a fan of if they have to pull all the levers i'm more mm. than happy to pull all the levers uh or is it levers how do you say it <laughs> <laughs> either or I, i'm european so I, i'm supposed to know that <laughs> okay either <laughs> okay so okay so let's talk about your goals um mm -hmm. what would you say are your goals where do you see yourself in a year what would you like to uh now that you're a producer you're doing vocal stuff you're making great music uh what's your goal down the road um what's the dark straw brand like gonna be and where do you really um you know what what would it take for you to get there Honestly, um, I'd like to be in a in a similar place to where uh, DJ Searle was um, a number of years ago, where he's just kind of mu making his music for fun, just for himself, and based off his own ideas and playfulness, um, which is where I take a lot of that element from with my uh, ideal for music production. Um, but just kind of having um, a little bit of a fan base or a conglomeration of people that interact with my music the same way or in a different way than I interact with it. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of taking those elements from it, enjoying it, and uh, kind of prospering it from there. Um, right. Okay. That's, that's kind of where I would like to be. I don't need a huge following. Um, and and, and really what made this him successful was more mainly the uh, live performances, correct? Because there never was a face of this genre that did these live performances, correct? Like, he would be uh, yeah. a sensation online, sure. But uh he's the forefront of happy hardcore in uh the u.s and uh what is the west australia, coast yeah. in asia too because uh, isn't he like australian or something or yeah he's from brisbane oh is that in, is that in australia yes yes <laughs> okay interesting very interesting okay very very cool um so what's your take on the whole uh asian market the dance market there uh what do you think of k-pop and um, do you feel like you're, you're as an artist, you, you're gonna be stressed out competing with like the big, massive K-pop world market that's out there, and or or do you see people coming into the, you know, listening to your kind of genre as well, time to time from the, from their market? What what do you, uh, what's your take on this? I mean, um, so one of the big things about uh, Asian consumerism, I guess is or at least uh, kind of a culture thing as well when they find something that they're really into um, they really zero in on it and kind of hone in and focus on it which creates these really awesome and interesting um, followings and groups across uh, different parts of asia including japan and uh, like south korea um, i think even in taiwan there's a lot of groups like this so i mean if if my music gets bigger picked up over there and they start really enjoying it then you know that's that's kind of what happens um 
but it's it's really interesting to see those uh, those kinds of shows where it's a very focused group of individuals that are really really driven into it. Mm-hmm. And for the most part, right now you're I would say you're kind of staying um, behind the scenes. You're not much on social media. Uh, what's your take on social media? And do you ever plan on coming to things like Instagram and stuff like that? I mean, probably it'll it'll probably come with uh, with following and with uh, people questioning, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, why aren't you posting on this yet? I was like, OK, OK, I, I'll, I can start. But um, I had a SoundCloud for a long time uh, when that was still a bigger thing. Um, and I would post some of my projects on there and work with a couple other um, like smaller producers that I knew from high school and things like that that had uh, had that inspiration to start making music. Um, and we would kind of mess with each other on, on SoundCloud for a while. But nice. um, I'm, I'm, I yeah, got very late on the SoundCloud yeah. game. Like SoundCloud, I should have gotten earlier on it, but I just got on it like last year. You know, all in on that now. Everything goes on SoundCloud, and um, right, right. now I let do me think. Ha- social media uh-huh. is a very useful tool, though. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, people say things about it, but I'm telling you, SoundCloud is actually you can do very well on it. Like when you absolutely. when if you do the right thing. Um, now. Uh, what about like, okay, think about this one, even though I did ask you about the top five, um, you know, influencers and stuff, how about the top three, um, you know, collab ideal dream partners for you? Well, who would be the top three? If you were to collaborate with three people in the music world, who would they be? And, um, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's a big one. Uh, it would be Cyril for sure. I've talked to Joel a few times. He's a really awesome dude, and I'd love to be able to to work no, with his style, even if it's just vocals. I would love to have him on a podcast. His name comes up every episode now. Like uh, every time, he's such a good guy, dude. <laughs> it, he's amazing. Um, yeah, I should even then, have uh, what's his name, uh, um, DJ Splash, too, on the podcast because his name yeah. keeps coming up too. <laughs> Go ahead. Really cool. <laughs> uh, so Cyril would definitely be right up at the top of the list. Um, MKN who is, I'm not sure if you followed him at all, um, he kind of brought back the reverse bass scene for Hardstyle. Ah, yes, reverse bass. Yes. Uh, he started doing, uh, he, he, I think they started on YouTube. Um, it was 100% reverse bass, and it was a, an hour-long mix that he would do every month that's just reverse bass, and he would dig through the fields to, to try to find uh, smaller reverse bass songs and start throwing them on there, but he's since started producing. Mm-hmm. Um and his stuff is really good. Um, wow. So I, I would like to work with him. I really like his style and his energy. Um, and as a third, I mean, absolute dream project uh-huh. um, would probably be um, probably be Wasted Penguins. Oh, wow. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. But like, he's on the server. Go DM him. But hey. <laughs> Um, okay, I gotta I double check. To, I, I, I used to. I used to see his face. I mean, I don't know. I, I never had a one on one with him. That's the thing. Is like, I should have had a one on one with him while we still had the chance. I he could still be on the server. I just don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wasted yeah. penguins. Great to know. All right. How about this? Uh, remember the top five uh, uh, tracks yes. of all time. <laughs> top five artists. Or, or tracks. Uh, or tracks. I mean, I uh, oh, do, actually, you can... I, I, or both. Uh, that, that way, it kind of, like, helps you out. Okay. E- either right. or, you know. So, I'll, I'll do artists, because that was, that was one that I was thinking about a little bit more. Okay. Um, as far as influential for me, um, because of the era of hard style that I kind of came from, Headhunters is still way up on that list. What's your favorite Headhunters, Headhunters song, by the way? For, for each artist you mentioned, give me their, your Ooh. favorite song of each. Okay. So, um... Headhunters would probably be his rip of Builder's uh, Her Voice. Uh huh. Um, it was just a really interesting and neat track that uh, kind of stuck around for me a little bit. I mean, Dragonborn was, you know, the pioneering kind of hard style track at the time, um, but uh, her voice was was probably one of my favorites. Um, then uh, let's see here for Wasted Penguins. And yes, I do keep on bringing Wasted Penguins up a lot, but uh, um, I really just love their bittersweet sound to their melodies and the atmospheric qualities that they really bring into the tracks. Um, I Miss You by Wasted Penguins. Hmm. I listened the hell out of that song. Um, it was what I would use for shuffle practice in the driveway throughout middle school and high school. Wasted Penguins, uh, if you're listening in, 
Take notes. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. A lot of respect. A lot of respect. Um, um what what about the you when you mentioned Har uh Hair Hunters? I'm gonna say another Raiders song. I don't know how many people like this because I'm very religious. Our church uh was probably my favorite headhunter song. I know Dragonborn is great and all yeah. the other, like Mohican is probably my favorite one because I'm a melody mm. freak. Uh yes. I, I love, I'm yep. a I'm a sucker for melodies. But our church, when he had that album, I went outside and like I I did like long walks. I took my bicycle out on these like summer retreats and stuff and I'll listen to uh -huh. his album and like back and forth from Spotify and uh you know I loved it but go ahead what do you think have you heard of our church and what, what do you think yes. about that one yes I think I've I've heard, listened to all of Headhunter's discography <laughs> you were, you, yeah everything um, is good I, I mean like sometimes do you see like artists having a hard time making everything being a very good production and, and like a like a, a hit shall we say not really hit hit mm -hmm. but more like a, something that's good and people his, their fans can actually come back to it and listen to it as opposed to like f the fans grilling them about oh why did you make that song uh <laughs> Do you, I don't see Headhunter as one of those people. I mean, he, he, like I can't. I, I, I never. I never grilled him on uh, on anything. I feel, mm. I, I'm very uh, confident to say that his stuff are just everything that comes out. One of my yeah. favorite moments that he did a collaboration was with this one guy, and uh, I should know his name because I will probably get butchered for this. But uh, they did this trip in uh, the Cayman Islands, uh, the Bahamas, or something. And then they did that uh, reggae song, and I was like, "Wow, that is so cool!" And they did the whole video thing and and the insta and the social media thing, and um, uh, there was never a complete version in hard style, but there was in reggae. But people in hard style, his fan there, his fan somebody remade the whole thing in like the first day, and I was like, "Yes," because I wanted that to hear the hard style version of it so bad. But go ahead. Yep. Um, uh, well, the question really was on that is, do you see that uh, being a a master is on that level do you is that where is that something that uh an artist uh that you should look up to should be as they always produce hits or is or do you have uh anybody that you give a pass to who you know what sometimes they produce something that's awful garbage but you let it slide <laughs> mm. um i mean I, as a as a coming or a, a small a zero from zero producer um and somebody who's worked around music uh -huh. for a long time there's there's always things that smash and things that are like eh, not so much um, like i'm so telling you like if the top the I top it, it's for, happened to the top djs like yeah. so much um uh in in the wwe in the wrestling business they call it getting over like mm -hmm. you know to get so much you know attention da, 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 da. um and then, like, for example, it's happened to, like, even, like, uh, David Guetta. I, I will, like, look at the comments, and yeah. I'm looking, like, my goodness, he's getting butchered. Uh, he did something on this festival, or he did something uh, on that production. Why? And people are like, why did you release it? Why did you release it? And, like, sometimes you ask yourself these questions. And I feel like certain people are just pressured to release stuff based on their sponsors and, yeah. and whoever yeah. they, they pay to play type of thing. And, like, there's tons of play-to-play -play people who go up to Guetta. Guetta, take my money and make this make the magic mm. happen that's the that's, kind of person uh that you know he's that kind of famous i don't blame him you know um so so okay let's keep going down the list you mentioned uh headhunters you mentioned um wasted, wasted penguins, penguins and yeah uh, we have three uh, more i think yeah so uh next one i'd have to pick would probably be tune up um hmm. and yeah. uh it, it as far as the song goes it's kind of a tie between uh bounce and uh raver's fantasy um, it's the craftsmanship of both of those songs is just very very sweet oh nice maybe may, you should so, hear some uh, of my latest stuff may, maybe you'll I'm, be like I'm oh my god is that tuna to. i'm just kidding uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but um for some reason i've i've, I've noticed that uh, it starts to remind me of it i mean um sometimes when i make music i'm like i knew i was what i was aiming for the last 12 13 years but my goodness if it wasn't for my peers they know who they are there's three individuals one of them is on the server two of them left and they uh, helped me get to where i wanted to be last year in the end of the year that's awesome and uh they're just so generous about the whole thing i'm like take it i'm like wow i can't believe it. because people keep the stuff as a secret sauce and my stuff sucked yeah, badly absolutely um so that's, that's where i'm at right now with hard style kicks is nobody really has like the the theory behind it yeah so much as um, just like oh yeah splice the rest of these together like, i i, I uh, so 
I'll get. Uh, let's follow up on that after the uh, podcast yeah. because I'll put you in touch with three people on our server who are like that'd be awesome. Live hard style repeat and stuff. It's die hard and so. Uh, well, this is good. I've, did we finish the? I don't. I don't think we we were got in, two more. Two more. Yeah. Got two more. Yep. Um. So next one would probably be Searle, uh, just because he uh-huh. helped me out as as uh, um, as an individual and kind of helped me learn how to get into things a little bit more and was uh, an amazing inspiration because he responded when I reached out to him. Wow. Um, I've actually never reached out uh, to him. I, I think I got banned on his chat one time when I first got in because I'm an idiot. <laughs> And I got banned for uh, promoting my music, I think it was. I'm like, what an idiot I am, right? But I was younger. I'm stupid. Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah, but I had uh, had actually reached out to him on Facebook, asking him some questions about about producing and talking with him a little bit. Um, Mm. And he responded, held a conversation just like a normal human being. Uh, uh, which yeah, was that, amazing. He that definitely he made is not corporate material. And, <laughs> no, no, that's that's kind of why he's got his own label and everything like that. It's just because he likes to. He he does himself. You know. I mean, uh, what was it? Uh, one of our partners in the label here told me that uh, they sent me his remix packs, his link to his website stuff yeah. that I can remix. And yeah. I'm like, okay, I just I just haven't had the time. I can do it. And it, 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 there's like a description like how you want to go about it. You want to mm-hmm. release it. Uh, ta, 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 do this if you don't want to say bootleg okay do that and like you know just make sure the yeah. credits are given and whatever and i'm like okay so uh i c- we can actually do things with it. i just never had the time of it, it for me it, it's been a timing issue because i wish i was this 13 years ago where now it's like man did it, why did we have to be so late about discord the mm-hmm. social media stuff, the YouTube, even YouTube was whack back in the 08, 09, and you have to, and the whole AI thing. Um, mm-hmm. But anyways, okay, so I, I, I so S3R was he down number four, or we finished it off? Yeah, he's he's number four. Number okay. five is uh, Moog from Mighty Car Mods. Um, wow. Not sure if you've heard any of his stuff. He mostly just produces for their YouTube channel. Okay, um, well that's not bad. I mean that's good yeah. because. Uh, you know, I love people who do things for the art and the great talent. And then, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll go back to one thing I said. So this is a great list of five uh, individuals. And I'll go back and, and list something that, uh, I mean, pick up on something that, that came up towards the end of this uh, podcast is um, the notion of um, being so much over as an artist Selling tickets, selling albums, millions, da, 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 da. You're, a, you're a made man. You know, you're, you're, everybody knows you. Oh, uh, and all of a sudden, your entire okay, let's say majority of your fan base squashes you, okay, and of the next fifteen years of what you come out of it is really not what it used to be as back in the day, because you've become mainstream or you're tackling the mainstream narrative and mm-hmm. and 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 the, and the fans didn't like it and and so I was one of them and like I would see like well why would you why would they do something like that it's like. I'm not saying it's career suicide, but like, yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, seeing them going other genres, like full, like 180 and like mm-hmm. people and you can read the comments and like, I'm one of those hardcore fans. And do you see that with any artists that you've had? Uh, you don't have to mention them. And how did you feel about the whole thing? Did you ever feel like about that anyone, with anyone? Yes. Um, so oh, no. I was a I was a pretty big show tech fan, and I was a, a hard, oh yes hardcore yes, yes. die hard hard style fan. You know, so uh, when they did um, oh god, what track was it? They slowed down and did like a um, uh, almost like a big room house style mm. sound when that was still big. Um, so they went from you know making like things like the F track, just these big booming fast paced hard style tracks, to a big room 128 BPM song. And uh, younger me, who's obsessed with hardstyle, was like, "What the hell is going on here? Absolutely not. This is not. This is not show tech. There's no way." And then they kind of kept producing house for a little while. I'm like, "This is weird. I don't like this. I can't do this oh, anymore." And it deterred tech. me away from show tech for a little <laughs> while. But, I feel uh, like I feel the same way silently because, not that I was never a diehard show tech fan, but I would still mm-hmm. put him in my hashtags. Assume them. Assuming them that they are like yeah. you know still doing hardstyle, but uh, I think in hardstyle a lot of people got emotional about this. A lot of people. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, look. Uh, before we, uh, yeah, so sorry, we have to end this. But before we yeah, do that, do you have any feedback for upcoming artists? Uh, what's your best advice for 
you know, EDM producers. You're not somebody who's like a newcomer, isn't like a beginner producer. Uh, I'm confident that I could do this podcast with you, which is why we did it. But what kind of feedback do you have for upcoming artists? I see a lot of mistakes. A lot of people are doing it. I'm at a point where I'm like, look, I'm in my early 30s. I'm just like, unless if you really beg for uh, feedback and assistance, stuff like that, I'll give it to you. But if not, then like, I mean, I I can't help people who can't help themselves. What kind of uh, what kind of uh, advice do you have for upcoming artists? Well, you can't help people that can't help yourselves is a great point. Um, Be open to criticism. Oh yes, that's probably the biggest one. Uh, that, that one huge. I'm telling. When I first started out, like I would not like it wasn't so much criticism. I ended up getting to arguments right off because like people would like go after me for personally, and I'm like that's different from constructive criticism, because like the only users who are going after me were the trolls, not so much that the right. uh, they were active right. users because certain social networks they just died out on their own, and I'm like, well, how could you do this? By the way, this is never going to happen with hands up now. I'm going to keep this baby running. I'm going to keep the oil running. The meter is going to keep running. And uh, no, nothing's going to collapse this Discord server. Mm-hmm. And we've been attacked before, but, you know. I mean, but anyways, um, so uh, this is very good interview. Um, this was Dark Strobe, everyone. And now our channel, uh, one of his favorite tracks here. We got Headhunters with her voice. So uh, shout outs to all the Hardstyle fans uh, listening to this podcast and every other EDM fan. Uh, Doc Straw from Nebraska, check him out. He's on our Discord server. I know he's not on social media, but that's okay. So uh, you we'll come say soon. hi to us. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you so much. You got it.